I really like these problems because you have to choose which beam is going to be most economical. What does economical mean? It means we're choosing the one that's least expensive or rather uses the least amount of material and that will be represented on, in the tables with being the least amount of weight. So we're looking for the least expensive beam that carries the load in the picture and its own weight, which we don't know until we choose a beam. Uh, how do we do that? Let's take a look. All right, first thing I always like to do is draw my free body diagram. This is supposed to be 0 0.2 kip per inch. 0 0.2 kip per inch. So we have some kind of beam here. I choose the axis 1, 1. I suppose that makes it look kind of like that and the long run, but we don't have to worry about that. Your table says which one is axis 1, 1. This is going to be really, I, I draw my shear and moment diagram just so that I can know what my max moment is. I could do this real quick just because it's a really easy situation. It's that my shear starts at zero and it's going to go down at a rate of 0 0.2 kip per inch along my 100 inches which means my total shear is going to be 0 0.2 times 100 or 20 kips. So that's for my shear diagram. My moment diagram it's going to be parabolic and this value equals the area of the whole entire shear. Since it's a triangle, it's negative 1,000 kip inches. Alright, so now I have my max moment, which means I can look at this equation in order to solve for... Um, I was given the allowable stress I found the max moment and I need to be comparing the section modulus of different beams. That's how I'm going to know which one is best. Without the additional weight of the beam, this is what my moment is going to be. What that means for my section modulus is that is the minimum section modulus that I can possibly have and keep up just the load minus its own weight. So I haven't completed the problem yet. I have to solve this for S. Now I can plug in my numbers. S min is 1,000 kip inches. And our sigma allow was 10 ksi. So our S min is 100 inches cubed. This is our starting point. The reason we do this is because on my table I have some S's that are pretty small and I would have to, those would be the most economical if they could hold up the weight. So I would have to start at the very bottom of the table and then work my way up and testing every single one. Finding a minimum section modulus means that we can skip all the beams that have less than 100 inches cubed for their section modulus. So this is a shortcut. We can cut out a whole bunch of those test trials. By this point, the rest of it has to be a test trial. We just start with the, the first beam that has over 100 inches cubed um, and we try it out and we see what happens. Which means I have to go back and do my statics for having an additional weight. So I'm going to be looking for a new maximum moment with a variable w being the distributed weight. So how would that change our shear moment diagram? That means that our force would have been 0 0.2 kip per inch plus w times 100 inches, which means our max moment equation would change a little bit as well. One half 100 inches times our new force, which is 0 0.2 kip per inches plus W times 100 inches. So this is going to be our max moment. Let's simplify that a little bit. So 1 half times 0 0.2 times 100 
times 100 times 100 will be 5,000. 5,000 inches squared, 0 0.2 kip per inch plus W. 1,000 kip inches plus 5,000 inches squared times W. W is going to be in units of force per inches, whatever that happens to be. So now we can start our same process over with a new max moment to get how big S has to be in order to hold both the load and its own weight for a variable weight. And then we can easily go through the table and plug in different weights and compare it to its section modulus. So I have 1,000 kip inches, just like before, with an additional 5,000 inches cubed times whatever W happens to be. Oh, it's a square divided by our allowable normal stress, 10 KSI. And this gives us 100 inches cubed plus, what's that, 500 inches to the fourth divided by K. This is W. And since I look in the table, I see that W is in terms of pounds per foot. I'm going to I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to change my k into pounds, so I'll put 0 0.5 inches to the fourth divided by pounds. I'll convert my w into pound inches later. I'm looking in my w table, and the first beam that has a section modulus greater than 100 inches cubed is my W1482. It has a section modulus of 123 inches cubed and has a weight of 82 pound per feet, which if I do the conversion real quick, that should give me 6.8 Three, three pound inches. So the thought process behind the, what I'm going to do next, I want to try this beam to see if it's going to withstand the load and its own weight. So I'm going to be putting my W into my formula and then I'm going to get a new section modulus and that's going to be my required section modulus and then I compare it to what I actually have, and if what I have is greater, then we're good to go. It's sufficient. And it's also the smallest, because we started with this, the one that is the lightest and uses less material. So let's see what happens. So S, I'll put R for required, equals 100 inches cubed plus 0 0.5 inches to the fourth per pound times 6.833 pound per inch. And that gives us a section modulus of 103.4 inches to the third. So if this is our required section modulus and we have 123 inches cubed for this particular beam, this is bigger, which means that we're okay. We're greater than required. Um, but that's the best beam for this particular fit, this particular situation. So my answer would be the W14 by 82. And that's it.